use your couch, your sofa. This is my little space. Welcome, welcome to Berlin. Thank you. Uh, is that your first time in first time in Berlin, guys? Uh, no, no. All right, tell us the stories, and uh, Tommy. What was the occasion you've been last in Berlin? The last time I was in Berlin, I don't remember. It, so. <laughs> so that was a good time. Very good time. Fair enough. I know I was here. Well, that's good enough. And Ron, what was your last time you've been here? Um, I've been here a lot. Uh, the last time I was here for a promotion for Hand of God. Uh, thank you. Thank you that one person who saw Hand of God. One audience member for that. Oh, two, oh, three. And then uh, before that, I was here to shoot a little movie called Enemy at the Gates. What a movie! A tiny, tiny movie. <laughs> you, you, you do something to me. Oh. Uh, well, uh, again, thank you very much for being in this comic con. We, uh, you have a big fan base here for Sons of Anarchy. Better guys. So, fan base of Sons of Anarchy! Uh, so, what I would like to do, I would like to ask you some questions and then we're gonna give the voice to the audience, right guys? Yes, they have some questions ready. So, Tommy, Philip, how much of Philip is in Tommy? How much of Tommy is in Philip? Uh, well, there's uh, touches of me in there, but uh, yeah, Philip is actually based on a real member of a motorcycle club who I got to meet, but he was actually only like four foot two with red hair, but uh, I uh, definitely took some of his character. Cool. Thank you very much. What did you take from him? Well, oh, I don't fucking know. He took all of his money. <laughs> I can pay for being him. I took his money. Fair enough. I left him bleeding in an alleyway. Still looking for me. Uh, Ron. How much yes. of Ron is in Clay? How Ron. much of Clay is in Ron? You do not question if it's coming, you should be prepared. Exactly. There is, uh, strangely enough, uh, Clay was but one of the more difficult characters I've ever had to play because there's nothing of me in Clay and there's nothing of Clay in me um, and I was wondering if I could really understand the guy you know, well enough to uh, play him effectively so it was a real challenge he's a... He just his whole thought processes, his whole way he's wired, his whole value system is um, very different from anything that I've ever, and usually when I take a role, it's because there's something in the, in the character that I recognize. Uh, when they offered me play, I was hesitant, because I didn't know whether I could do it or not. But, um, the money was so good. <laughs> you killed her. You fucking killed her. I do agree. How did you prepare for the role? Uh, I learned how to fall off a bike. Fair enough, that's, a, that's an important skill. But how did you change your thought process in a way? How do you go into the character? Um, a lot of conversations with uh, Kurt Sutter, who created the role. You know, I really wanted to understand his function in the piece. Um, uh, what Kurt was thinking when he cre created the character. Uh, this was something that, you know, I needed help with. I needed help understanding the way this guy thinks, uh, how quick he is to be ruthless and do things that are very um, immoral and uh, unethical. And, um... You were a pretty ruthless motherfucker, but thank you, but first you, you killed Obi's wife, that her spite. I, 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 I killed as many people as I could. <laughs> I, a few got away. True. 
true. And you had a pretty um, how you how you sum up that that death in one word. <laughs> but uh, it was um, ruthless death as well for Clay. Well, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. True. That's true. That's true. Um, tell me, how did you uh, prepare for the role? Of course, you could foresee this question coming. I smoked a lot of marijuana, drank a lot of alcohol. Nice. And um, I don't know. I, I kind of I hung out. I hung out a lot with uh, David Labrava, who plays Happy in the show, um, and he's. A member of a motorcycle club, so I, I don't know. I got a lot of information from David, and uh, that was a kind of weekly basis. That we'd film for five days, and then David would go off to Calif uh, San Francisco, Oakland, and be with his club, and then come to work on Monday with all these stories. So you always thought that you were in that world, so it helped a lot. So thank you, La Brava. Fair enough, thank you so much. And uh, guys, do you have ever thought about how differently would your character evolve or how differently the story uh, would go if you would write the script? <laughs> you know, I, I tried uh, getting into that little, playing that little game and all you do is lose because is, you are not writing the script and you're better off not having an opinion about um, where you think you should go because you, you're just going to be disappointed if you think that way. So you just, you just the, the exercise is to resign yourself to come into work and, and, and portray what you're given to portray, whether you like it or not. There are certain days I liked it a lot. There were certain days I had a lot of problems with it. But um, on balance, it was a phenomenal show to be a part of, you know, meeting these guys, the guys who sat at that table, you know, especially the, the beautiful bloke to my left. Me, um, no, it's tough, me. You know, it was, a, it was a kind of a, one of the great little periods of my life. I mean, I was on the show for six years, he was on for seven. And that's not a job, that's like a family at that point. So whatever, uh, Whatever we were asked to do, was, it was uh, nothing was too hard compared to all of the goodness that, that the job uh, handed us. So do you think there was a certain trust that you had to have in yeah. script writers? Well, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we, we understood that we didn't have very much to say about things. Uh, Tommy? No comment. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> well, uh, thank you so much, uh, guys. I'm going to turn to uh, audience because I know they have a lot of questions. So guys, hands up and my lovely assistant is going to chase you with a microphone. Hello. It's working? Okay, it's working. Uh, my question is not about Sons of Anarchy and Ghost to Run. Uh, in the 80s, you played Vincent in uh, Beauty and the Beast. Easy and Tiger. <laughs> And your portrayal was so touching, and I was wondering how do you prepare yourself for that role? Um, it was one of those things where, you know, um, as I was saying how tough it was to play Clay, even though I had no makeup on, I was just like me. Vincent was somebody who I understood immediately. He, he, he was, there was a... Uh, the way he was conceived was um, very much like the way I thought about myself, um, and uh, I understood him uh, completely. So there was no real preparation involved, it was just basically follow your heart, wait to see what Rick Baker creates in terms of the outward appearance of the guy, have that work on the way he walks and the way he talks and everything like that. But the rest of it, the heart of the character was somebody who I identified with and, 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 and understood deeply. Thank you so much. Uh, next question, please. 
Hello. Hello. Is that what? Stop shouting! Stop yelling at me! Um, my question is to both of you. I know that some of the boy, the others, uh, were showing their back tattoos which, uh, with the huge logo on it. And uh, uh, my question is, uh, do you know how long it took um, to put it on? The back tattoos? I put mine on every day, uh, even if I was wearing clothes, which I was, just because I had to have it there. Just, and it took, I don't know, it took about an hour. Short answer, it took about an hour. Thank took you. about an hour. Thank you so much. Thanks Tommy's question. back tattoo took about an hour. I didn't have a back tattoo because I didn't have a very pretty back, so I made sure you never saw it on my ass. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Uh, next question, please. Hello. Hello. My question goes to Tommy. Hello. And I would like to know if we are going to see a little bit of chips and Maya Simpson season two. Can you uh, give us a little hint? I have no, no comment. No, I no. Who is he being? I thought Chips died in a horrible motorcycle accident. He fell off a cliff. Thank you. Next question, please. Hi. Um, for Charlie, it was difficult to let go, Jax. Um, how difficult was it for you to let go of this show? For me, it was difficult. Uh, you know, six years. Um, you, a lot of good times, a lot of great memories, a lot of great friendships. You know, it, most jobs, maybe last sometimes a day or a week or a few months tops. You know, when you have something that gets under your skin like this, this, this experience did, it's very hard to say goodbye. And it's very hard to, uh, it's very pleasurable experience to play a character that you love on a show that you love for that long with people that you love. So, you know, exiting is emotional. And, you know, there's a part of you that wishes it would never end. And you have to manage those feelings. But, um, because, you know, if not, you end up in a rubber room in a hospital. Uh, electrodes all over your head. Little you. dad will do you. Thank you. And for you, Tommy, was that difficult to let go of Sons of Anarchy? Uh, well, we're sitting here, so... Um, it was, yeah, it was difficult. Um, like Ron was saying, we, we were a family. And, you know, we spent more time together than we did with our own families. From dusk to dawn, and hang out and then all ride home together or whatever the hell. Yeah, it, it, it took a while. It took a long while to take it by an eye show. But, um, yeah, there was a lot of love there. A lot of difficulty, but a lot of love, so it was, it was definitely sad to see the light. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, next question, please. Yeah. Uh, Ron, I'm a very big fan of you, and um, I admired you in startup. Really seriously continued. Can you, can you please repeat? Startup, the series. Uh, really seriously continued. Uh, I, think that's, I think that's over with. Done? Yeah. I think I think Sony Crackle has gone out of business. Oh. Thank you so much for the question. Next, please. Hi guys. Uh, you've both been in a lot of TV shows and a lot of movies. Uh, which do you prefer, to play in movies or in TV shows? The, 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 you know, the only thing that, that um, matters is. The material, you know, whether you're shooting, whether you're shooting a TV series or a film, if the writing is great and the world is great and the character is great, that's the only thing that you should be concerned about. You know, the rest of it is um, 
doesn't feel any different to be shooting a TV series than it does a, a movie. It's the same approach to your work, and uh, so. But like you said, that it, uh, it builds a bond with the, when you work on a TV show and you work on it longer. Does that make a difference? Or? Well, sometimes you're on a TV show that you wish was longer, you know. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the big difference. Is you know, a TV show can last years and years and years. A movie, you're you're, you're through shooting in a matter of months, and uh, but but the process is the same. Thank you. Tommy, do you prefer movies or series? Oh, uh, same as Ron. It, it's all about the material and the director. I suppose the difference. Uh, a lot of TV. You go through a certain amount of directors, and it's now usually the same director consistently doing the show. Whereas a movie, you work more one on one with a director, so there's that advantage I like if I like the director. But it's definitely, uh, if it's on the page, if it ain't on the page, it ain't on the stage. Thank you so much. Next question, please. Um, for both of you is, um, do you remember filming a favorite scene or an episode? And which one uh, was it? From Sons of Anarchy? Too many to choose from? Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot to choose from. I, I, no, but you know what? Not just because you're sitting next to me, but the night, the spoiler, the night that we shot you in the, the, the hangar, that was a really distressful heat. I was, I, I was very upset that evening for a lot of reasons. Losing you was the main reason, but it was the whole way it was done and I was just so kind of fucking bummed. I thought it was good, it was, it was pretty, well, it wasn't great, but it was, it was uh, I'm very emotionally tied to that scene. When I think about that show, that's one of the things that always pop in there. When we take Clay into the room and we just all stand around and then bang, it's over. Just to see the mighty Clay fall in character and as myself was was very heartbreaking to me. It was really heartbreaking. It was, uh, it was the end of Clay and it was the end of me and Ronnie spending so much time together on set. So, I remember that, yeah, that, that, was, that, was, that was a painful scene. Same here. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was an intense scene, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, next question, please. Hello, Harry Potter. <laughs> and my question goes to Tommy. I, what would you think about the movie Guardians of the Galaxy? I think James Gunn did a phenomenal job with that. I think it's uh, the greatest show in the universe, if you like. I thought he did a fantastic job. He's a very talented man, and uh, it's dead on the screen. You can't fault it. Good okay. show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, next question, please. Thank you. Characters, and I think he did an amazing job the way he killed everyone up. And so, Tommy, how is it for you to be like one of the survivors and not having a great, amazing death scene? Uh, well, you know, I don't know. Um, last man standing. I don't know. Maybe we'll do a show with me and Tag one day, riding off into the sunset. Who knows? Um, but yeah, there was some emotional death in that scene. And I'm amazed that I wasn't part of that. I'm amazed that he's still alive. Chips are still alive. 
what uh, death would you imagine for chess? Oh, uh, probably. Not falling off from a cliff on the motorcycle. No, he probably drunk off his arse, full of drugs, or a gaggle of hookers. Fair enough, that's a beautiful death. I applaud that. Uh, next question, please. Uh, yes, hello. Um, I have a question for my best friend who thinks, uh, Tommy, who thinks you're very hard with the sunglasses, but she has a question. Why do you always wear them inside and outside? Is it just a thing or... Why do I wear sunglasses? Yes, all the time. Because they're cool. I don't know, I started wearing them when I was a kid. Uh, I had really terrible eyesight and the lenses in my spectacles were really thick and I used to get my specs tinted all the time like my opposite and then I got an operation to fix my eyes and I realized I fucking hate light so there you go the shade stay and you look cool and I'm pretty fucking cool yeah. to that alright guys uh <laughs> I have time for our last question from the audience and then it's going to be last question from me. So please, make it good, no pressure. Alright, nice to meet you again. Um, I have one question. Do you had one time uh, a real feedback from the, like the rocker scene? Because that's all more you're playing like rockers in this uh, Sons of Anarchy series. But did you ever had feedback from the, from the real rocker scene, from Hells Angels or whatever? The, the the biker scene. Yeah. Did yeah. you get a feedback from biker scene? We got great feedback. From oh the yeah, hell yeah. Um, when when we were in our off season, you know, I was traveling around the country and around the world, you know, doing other projects and just going on vacation. And whatever bike club, if they would hear that I was going to be in their town, I would always get invited to come and have a beer, and sit down and go. They loved us. They really, they, they sent us nothing but their, their, their best wishes and their love. They were very appreciative of the fact that we didn't paint them one dimensionally. You know, we, we, we made them as real as we could. You know, we made them as interesting as we could. We really went out of our way to understand the hierarchy of the club and how it works. And, how the relationships are between men and women and between uh, the top of the organization all the way down to the, uh, uh, what's it called, the kidneys. But yeah, that's true because this is the first show that portrays the biker community that well. So, well done, gentlemen. Well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the question and uh, guys, uh, I have one last question because Tommy, you are doing a Netflix show now. Blue Assassin, yeah. yeah. Can, you tell, yeah. can you tell us a little bit more about it or is it still a secret? Um, well, we're still waiting for season two, but um, I can't really see anything to fuck. But, uh, yeah, if you haven't seen it, it's Blue Assassins, Netflix. Um, go home and watch it. Get out of here. <laughs> hey, Ron, what is the project that you're working on now that you're proud of? I'm not really proud of anything. <laughs> well, that's moderately proud. <laughs> um, uh, what am I working on? I'm, I'm developing a lot of stuff. Uh, I've been producing movies for the last six years or so. Um, uh, I'm very proud of the last movie that my company put out, which is called Asher. It's really hard to find, so good luck finding it, because it got a piece of shit to the distribution. But it's a really good movie, and i um, probably more proud of that than anything I've done. And, uh... Where are we going to find it, though? That's a good question. Alright, we're going we're gonna to Google this. Asher, if you can't find it, Call your congressman. <laughs> call your senator. I don't know what you have here in Germany. Just, just call somebody. Call the mayor. Chancellor. Call the, Chancellor. call the, call the dog catcher. <laughs>
All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much for being on our stage. Guys, a round of applause.